Is now the time to buy bank stocks? The top six bank stocks are down 28% in the last year, and with the hawkish Federal Reserve raising interest rates, now is a great time to look for some deeply discounted bank stocks. Nearly all of the big banks topped third quarter forecasts, and their stocks popped a bit. Bank of America and JP Morgan Chase are two of the biggest banks in the world, and both stocks are up almost 10% in the last month. Now might finally be a good time to bargain shop bank stocks for the long-term portfolio. Let's take a quick look at a few of our winning trades, and if you want winning trades like these, be sure to hit that like and subscribe button. We're down on my Discord. You can see a lot of our channels on the left-hand side, and we're looking at some winning trades. We've got John B, 37% profit on a SPY put today. Well done. We've got The Professor. He ripped a 12.5% return on KNIX. Great job. We've got Amanda Miller, 31.9% on Melly. We've got Tarzan, another happy Friday payday in the midst of a horrible market, very true. And he had a 35.38% profit on SPY. We've got King Nasher, 4.9% profit on Copper, still holding two positions. And then we've got Amanda Miller, PBR, an 11.88% return. Thanks for the great alert, Jerry. And this was one of the trade alerts we sent out. A lot of us are capitalizing on that. And we got too many more to mention. You can see just a lot of profits rolling in. This is what we do. Hopefully, come on over to our side and join us. If you want all of our trading alerts and help from our awesome community, then join us in Discord. All right, now it's time to sit back, grab a huge cup of coffee, and hang on, because this is not your normal stock channel. We're now at beastmodeanalysis.com for a side-by-side -side fundamental analysis on the top six banking stocks by cap rate. Coming in at number one, we've got JP Morgan, ticker JPM. Then we've got Bank of America, BAC, Wells Fargo, WFC, Citigroup, ticker C, PNC Financial Services, PNC, and then we've got US Bank, ticker USB. Now, the first thing we can see, the industry and the sector, these are all banks in the financial sector. They all trade on the New York Stock Exchange. And then if we come down and look at the stock performance, I love low PE ratios for long-term stocks. These guys all qualify. Our lowest on the day is gonna be Citigroup coming in at 5.1, and our highest is gonna be PNC at 11.5, but all of these guys have nice low PE ratios, so that's a real plus. Fundamental analysis is really easy when you break down the information into sections where it's easy to understand. So right now we're looking at items from the income statement and this tells us whether or not the companies are making money. And you'll notice for like cost of goods and gross profits, there's an NAN. That simply means that it's not available and that's because these companies are not required to report these on their financial statements. But what we do wanna look at is the net income margin. And here the higher the better. And banks, these guys are money printing machines and JP Morgan is our winner on the day at 39 9.72%, followed by number two, Bank of America at 35.88%. And then we've got U.S. Bank coming in at 35%. And then the other three, they're all really close behind. Let's go ahead and scroll on down to our balance sheet. And this tells us whether or not the companies are financially stable. And if you need to know what anything means inside of the beast mode, you just hover over the little eye, a little pop-up comes up and tells you exactly what it's all about. So current assets include cash, cash equivalents, accounts receivable, stock inventory, marketable securities, prepaid liabilities, and other liquid assets. So on so inside of beast mode, we can actually teach you all of the different financials that we're looking at just by hovering over these eyes, makes it really easy. And what I like to look at here is gonna be the total assets versus total liabilities. We always want that number to be above one. And we can see these banks, they're all extremely consistent in a very tight range between 1.09 and 1.11. Next up, we've got the key performance metrics. These are all very insightful to company's overall condition. And here we like to see a lot of black and blue and anything red is a bit of a red flag. And that's something we should definitely take into consideration. So first up, we've got revenue growth last year. Our winner on this one's gonna be PNC at 13.91%. For free cash flow margin, our winner is gonna be Citigroup coming in at 79.73%. Then the rule of 40 indicator, our strongest again here is Citigroup. The FNR indicator, this simply sums up the total of the free cash flow, the net income margin, and the revenue growth over the last 12 months. The higher that number, the better. And on this one, our winner again is gonna be Citigroup. And then on our book value ratio, we can also see a 2.02. .02. And it's not very often that they've got a higher book value than they do an actual stock value value. So this is a really big plus for Citigroup. 
Management effectiveness, this tells us how well management is generating returns for investors. And I like to look at the return on equity. And here we've got two standouts. Our first one being JP Morgan coming in at 16.9%. And coming in at number two is US Bank at 14.6. And then everybody else is all above 10%. So all in a pretty tight range. And the one other thing we want to look at here is the dividend yield. And I love it if it's 4% or higher. And a lot of these guys are coming in right around the 3%, 1%. But we've got two of them over 4%, that being Citigroup at 4.6% and U.S. Bank. So that's a nice little dividend to pick up over the year as well. All right, our last section is going to be the growth metrics, and companies should be consistently growing their business. For net income growth, we've got JP Morgan at 65.9%, Bank of America 78.7%. I'm going to save Wells Fargo for last. We've got Citigroup 98.7%. We've got PNC at negative 24.5%. That's a bit of a red flag. And then we've got US Bank at 60.6%. So we can see most of these guys are in the you know, 60, 70, 80 range, and then Wells Fargo really stands out at 538.1%. And this is what I call an anomaly and most likely something happened in the business. Maybe they sold a part of their business, but there was something in the accounting section that would make this number stand out. So I would not take that one at its face value. We're now at tip ranks and let's see what the analysts think of these stocks. First up, we've got JP Morgan and it's coming in with an analyst price target of 137.91, 12.83% of upside. And then we can see their consensus here. Everybody is a moderate buy, except we've got a hold on Citigroup. We've got Bank of America, 14.3% of upside. Wells Fargo, 18% of upside. Citigroup, 25% of upside. PNC, 15.7% of upside. And then we've got US Bank at 25% of upside. And let's scroll down. Let me show you a really cool feature in tip ranks. It's called the performance comparison. And anytime we do these side by side comparisons inside of tip ranks, it'll give us this little chart right here. And you can simply turn each of them on and off to see what's going on and exactly where they are. Pretty cool feature. Just thought I'd show you that as well today. Bank stocks are starting to look appealing if we are bottom fishing for long-term investments. The two I like the most from today are Bank of America and JP Morgan. Bank of America is also a Warren Buffett stock that's his second largest holding behind Apple in his $313 billion portfolio. I think that's a pretty big endorsement. Plus, Bank of America is the most interest sensitive of the big banks. When the interest rate yield curve shifts, no bank sees its net interest income rise or fall more than B of A. With the Federal Reserve aggressively raising interest rates to tame historically high inflation, Bank of America can expect billions of dollars in added net interest income on its outstanding variable rate loans. So between a 35% net profit margin and being well positioned with variable rate loans, Bank of America is my top pick for the long term. While I wouldn't bet the farm on bank stocks, picking up a few shares for the long term is definitely something to consider. I really hope you enjoyed today's video and if you want more information on my option plays and what stocks I'm buying and selling and when I'm buying and selling them, make sure you join my Discord. You'll get exclusive content including my daily hot stock list to help you build your wealth and this includes our bearish and bullish stocks and how to play them even if you are a beginner. So if you'd like to receive all of my trade alerts, indicators, and free stocks from Moomoo and Webull, then check out the links down below. Peace, and I'll see you on the next video.